play down here in Tennessee. We don't need y'all to talk about us because we're going to talk about ourselves. Well, Jake, here we are. Look who it is. <laughs> yeah, it is Titans Tube uh, eventually coming at you with a new video here. Uh, a lot of time has passed, Jake. Uh, entire 2022 has passed, uh, so we wish you all a happy new year. Hope you guys uh, had a good New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, stayed safe, all that good stuff. Uh, but yeah, season has flown by, Jake. Um, so, to cover everything uh, in this video, we're going to talk about the Dallas game on Thursday night and just kind of going ahead. And why not? We're going to jump right into this preview game uh, against Dallas or uh, against Jacksonville uh, coming now on Saturday afternoon, Saturday night. Night. We're Saturday the 8 o'clock slot. Yep. Dude, it, it's it, it happened. It literally came down to this. The worst possible, you know, we knew this was probably going to happen. The writing was on the wall as far as, you know, we continued having injuries. Tannehill, of course, dropping for the season kind of, you know, put the reality on display that, yeah, this, mm -hmm. this team is uh, literally in danger of letting all the good work and progress from the first half of the season slip away and allow the Jacksonville Jaguars to find their rhythm and rip off a winning streak. And now are not only uh, favored to win, uh, you know, the AFC South, they've uh, surpassed us in overall record. And yeah, they, they've done the complete full comeback, Jake. Uh, so uh, it, the, the, everything is on the line on Saturday, dude. Uh, Josh Dobbs, is there any magic here? Can he save the season? That seems to be the story. We'll start with this, Jake. Uh, Mike Vrabel says today as a Monday afternoon, uh, Josh Dobbs is our starter uh, to try to defend our two-time AFC South champion Titans and to just try to make something happen out of a decently promising start to the season. And now it's just turned into what a disaster that we're in now. Six-game losing streak, uh, players dropping like flies, but we should be getting some players back. But I guess the storyline, Jake, is what can we expect from this Titans team? Josh Dobbs, you know, going to lead this team in a hostile environment in Jacksonville. Th this is the biggest game in, for Jacksonville. You know, outside of 2017, when they made their run to the AFC Championship against the New England Patriots and nearly knocked them off, uh, this is one of the biggest games for them, not only because of the circumstances, but because of the opponents. They wanted, they wanted to opportunity to sweep the Tennessee Titans and knock them off uh, knock them out of the playoff race and get an AFC South title. I mean, they have got to be chomping at the bits uh, come Saturday night, Jake. So, uh, yeah, I know that's a lot. That's a big preamble uh, intro here. Uh, but, yeah, wh wh what are your thoughts, man? Uh, Josh Dobbs, here we go. Here we go. Uh, to the moon, Astro Dobbs, Justin. I am going to get my NASA certification, uh, all my rocket scientist uh, homework wow. done in preparation for Saturday. <laughs> I want to be in the same mental plane as Josh Dobbs. Uh, real quick, uh, quick question for the native Tennessean down there. Is it Joshua Dobbs or just Josh Dobbs? Because I've heard a lot of both and it's been kind of confusing. That's a good, I don't think I can give you a concrete answer on that. I'm ashamed of myself. I, That's all right. That's I have all right. seen both. It's almost a 50-50 of what I hear mm -hmm. whenever people refer to him, whether on social media and text or just talking about him. Mm -hmm. I, I I said Josh Dobbs. That was just like my natural instinct. So That's I'll, mine I'll too. Josh. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. I will also go with Josh. <laughs> nice and succinct, two syllable. Very, very nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyways, Josh Dobbs, Justin, let me tell you, man, I I don't know if this is more of a bad look for Malik Willis or a great look for Josh Dobbs. I had several people who are fans of the Browns and the Steelers who Josh Dobbs has spent time with and played in preseason games. He played in some mop-up duty for Pittsburgh. Uh, everybody texted me and said, I really like Josh Dobbs. Like, you guys are going to really? like Josh Dobbs if he you know, ends up contributing and, and shows up on the field because he's a locker room favorite. He's a great guy, uh, you know, a rocket scientist, yada, yada, yada. 
Yeah. And a bunch of people uh, sent their well wishes for Josh Dobbs, which made me an instant fan, you know, all those warm messages. And Justin, let me tell you, he looked more poised, more confident, more ready, more uh, just NFL. He looked more like an NFL quarterback than Malik Willis has in any of his game action uh, to this point. And it was an obvious decision. You mentioned Coach Rabel announced it today in his press conference. Obvious decision. Who's going to start in Jacksonville? Josh Dobbs over Malik Willis because it was just the eye test. Even early on in that first quarter uh, of the Dallas game, it was obvious. It was up apparent that Josh Dobbs is a better quarterback candidate for the Titans right now than Malik mm-hmm. Willis, which which sucks because, you know, hope springs eternal. Malik Willis was maybe our project quarterback that was going to be the future. But right now, it's 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 looking more like Josh Dobbs has a better chance of being the Titans' starting quarterback in the future than Malik Willis, which is which is a bummer. But uh, I just wanted yeah. to highlight how good of a job I thought Josh Dobbs did stepping in, being on the team for less than ten days, getting yes. a start yeah. in Thursday night football <laughs> against a, a good opponent, and he had a great game. Justin, he was he was twenty of thirty nine, two hundred and thirty two yards, a touchdown, and a pick. He did get away with another interception or two, but I mean, he's a dude they just signed off the practice squad in Detroit, brought in, and within 10 days, he's starting. So give him, give him a little bit of slack. I thought he did really, really, really well uh, in his first action. And he would have had an even better game if it weren't for big time drops from Rob Woods. Traylon Burks had a drop in that game. Uh, He was, you know, continuously seeing that this Titans roster around the quarterback has been letting down this offense as as it were. Uh, But I I just wanted to really, really praise and shower Josh Dobbs and his early action with the Titans, because it was a far cry. It was a big time improvement from what we've seen in the past several weeks with either a hobbled Tannehill or a, or a Malik Willis. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent agree. I think this is the obvious correct decision for the team to go in, in terms of uh, starting quarterback. Uh, and I think I said it in the last preview, um, you know, leading up to the Dallas game is that it feels like maybe a, a trial game, you know, for Josh mm-hmm. Dobbs. It looks like he's going to be the guy to give us a better chance to win right now uh, for this game against Jacksonville. than he's going to earn, you know, that that starting spot. And so I think the coaches made the correct decision, you know, and yeah, <clears throat> like you said, putting him in the kind of the same position that Malik Willis is in and this offense, the personnel dealing, dealing with the injuries. Uh, wide receiver, offensive line, all that. Uh, Josh Dobbs was able to move the offense, I thought, more effectively, pushing the ball downfield, having some nice throws. Uh, Racy McMath, was that his first uh, reception of his career? Um, and I think he's got two. That was his third, probably. Oh, okay. You can count him on one hand. But, hey, yeah, I, I love it. The, uh, what a dimension to this offense is to see the ball being pushed, you know, 40 yards down the field. We've seen Burks do it a few times this year, but for another player to step up, you know, I, I, I think it's huge. Uh, so, yeah, and we'll see. And, and he's doing this, you know, without Derrick Henry and really a good, you know, or a running game mm-hmm. or at least the threats of Derrick Henry on the field. And so we're expecting Derrick Henry to be back. Um, so would love to see, you know, with a full 10 days of practice now in between games, uh, what the, you know, what Downing or, or, you know, Vrabel can try to install here, you know, for some more, you know, option type of plays for Dobbs to be able to use his legs. And, you know, it, it, he, yeah. You know, he, we did have plays where, you know, throwing it from the pocket and he did well, you know, he was kind of hit and miss. Sure. Uh, the drops, you know, would have helped if the receivers could have held onto the ball. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, using his athleticism, I, I think with Derrick Henry on the field, I think, uh, you know, we may be able to see some good things, uh, hopefully against Jacksonville. Uh, but but you said it, you know, it was kind of a, a spark, so to speak, uh, kind Absolutely. of a breath of fresh air to see a quarterback come in there. And I was surprised that his touchdown to Robert Woods was his first NFL touchdown pass. He's been in the mm-hmm. league for like six years, I think. And he's seen a lot of preseason action. You know, he's usually a backup uh, on a team, whether it's the Browns or a lot, or just a few years for the Steelers. Uh, and I thought he'd seen a decent amount of in-game action. Um, but maybe I'm wrong. But I was surprised that, hey, that's his first NFL touchdown pass. Because he's, he's scored a lot in the preseason, at least. So he does have mm-hmm. some game experience, but... Uh, I guess this is kind of new for him, too, in terms of playing like real meaningful football as the starting quarterback, you know, in December. This is kind of new territory from him. But you still kind of see that he does have that experience. He's picked up on these things the last few years. Uh, and hopefully that's something that we can see Malik Willis do. But 
Um, as of right now, yes, I, I think Josh Jobs looks to be easily the better quarterback, and he gives us the better chance against Jacksonville. So, um, yeah, losing against Dallas sucked, but ultimately it was pretty meaningless uh, regardless. Exactly. Uh, Titans would still be in the same position now, and which is a win and get in uh, on Saturday night. So, yep. So, so we'll see what happens. And like I said, we're getting some players back. Surely, yeah, obviously we should be getting Simmons back. Uh, Autry hopefully can come back. Hopefully that was more precautionary to hold him out of mm-hmm. Dallas. Um, and I don't know, Christian Fulton, Amani Hooker, I think they have not been placed on IR, so there's a chance for them to come back. They would be huge additions yeah. uh, to add for this defense. So uh, we could be in for a game. I mean, it's I know it's a lot Absolutely. of doom and gloom around here. and. No. It, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we saw it in the Dallas game. I don't know what my mindset was going into the Dallas game, what I wanted to see, but whatever it is I wanted to see, Justin, I saw it, either be it from Josh Dobbs, you mentioned right at the end there, his decisiveness, his he knows he's behind a rough shot offensive line that is going to yeah. let somebody in at some point, and something we haven't seen from Malik Willis at all, really. And I mean, even Ryan Tannehill still struggles with this. You got to get the ball out, especially with Dennis Daly at left tackle and whoever yeah. the hell else we're plugging in. Uh, yeah. You have to get the ball out quick. And Josh Dobbs stood there, one read, two read, ball was out. And, it, and you said it was refreshing. That was a great word to put. It was refreshing to see. And another thing I thought was refreshing to see in that Thursday night game, Justin, this defense played with a lot of heart, a lot yeah. of effort, especially oh, yeah. from its main leader, Kevin Byard, who snagged two picks in that game. Man, that was good. Byard coming back to make a couple of plays to give the Titans at least a chance. I know you look at the box score and you see 27 to 13, two touchdown loss. Titans played all of their backups. Uh, and, you know, what moral victories, if any, are to gain out of this? Kevin Byard came out playing motivated. And I think that in turn charged the whole defense. I thought the defense oh, yeah. played really, really well for having – three starters i think begin the game on defense which is ridiculous. crazy which is ridiculous but uh they play with a lot of heart and i want to shout out dr gibby jack gibbons for coming <laughs> oh, yeah. in and being a part of this linebacker depth he made a couple great splash gibby. plays in the game uh that's my guy dr gibby i think brabel really likes him and he's he's out there playing with his hair on fire and there's another guy who you'd like to get back in that linebacking core justin david long uh, has yeah. not been activated with his practice window from IR. I don't know what they're waiting for, if if he ever will come back. But uh, but I just wanted to give my hats off to the Titans defense for playing motivated, playing in a game that truly did not matter for the Tennessee Titans at all to the point where they're resting Derrick Henry, Jeff Simmons, Danico Autry. The list went on and on and on. In a game that didn't matter, they showed up to play. And that <laughs> is the Mike Rabel difference, I think. And it gave me a little bit of hope. Uh, it's always the hope that kills you, Justin. But it gave me a little bit of hope in my stomach for this Jacksonville game. It's going to be a divisional game. It's going to be two teams that are rivals, that know each other. You think Derrick Henry wants to go out like this? He wants to go to his you know, his home region and, yeah. and go out like this, seven straight losses in a row to finish the season seven and ten? He, I, this is going to be a motivated football team, Justin, coming Absolutely. off of extra rest, double extra rest because they didn't play the starters on Thursday. I, uh, am I wrong to have hope? Am I is is my I, question no. back at you? No, no, no. I don't think uh, I don't think you're wrong at all. And you you hit the nail on the head in that I expect Saturday night we are going to see an extremely motivated team that's going to come out and fight. Uh, with everything they have, with everything on the line. I think, you know, this game, there's a lot of pride on the line. There's a lot of, uh, you know, that 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 deep, intense rival, you know, energy on the line. And Jacksonville wants to, to sweep us and get one over on us, or a, a second one over on us of the mm-hmm. season, uh, just as bad as, as we want to defend the title. And I think uh, the team can be encouraged, uh, you know, with what we saw against Dallas, one of one of the top teams, you know, in the league, a team that that beat the Eagles. You know, this team dropped 40 points on the Eagles just a week before. And, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, you know, Titans did better than that, albeit, you know, 27 points is still a good chunk of points to give up uh, in a game. But they, they were still out there making plays, making life hard for that for that Cowboys offense. Um, so, yeah, I it did kind of instill some hope and considering, you know, the players were getting back. Yes, uh, Derrick Henry is going to be fired up, and Jeffrey Simmons is going to be fired up. Bayard's got to f- be feeling himself now after getting two picks. You know, I, I love seeing 
you know, Bayard and, and Simmons, you know, even if, you know, we're playing bad and it sucks, it's still nice to see. I, I like rooting on good stats, Jake. I'm, I'm a little petty like that. It's good to see Bayard get a couple more picks. I think that brings him to four on the year now. And Bayard is cementing himself as one of the all-time greats here in Nashville. Uh, so still good to see him playing at a high level, coming up clutch for us, uh, even during a downtime right now in the midst of a six-game uh, losing streak. Uh, the defense was out there, yeah, g giving uh, this team a chance to stay in it. Uh, and, you know, with, with Josh Dobbs, going back to him real quick, just the way he was able to adapt, really, with the short, you know, week of prep and being able to move the offense, you know, with, uh, you know, with a bright of a guy as he is, he seems like a player that can be sort of a plug-and-play guy. He seems very coachable, just the ultimate teammate, says, like super humble, but very hardworking, and uh, he can pick up on a lot of things. Obviously, everyone talks about his, his school credentials and, and whatnot, um, so he seems a guy that you can bring in and coach up and get up to speed and he can uh, cons absorb that and um, hopefully uh, deliver something on the field. And, yeah, we saw a lot of good things like that. So I'm not saying Malik Willis isn't that. It's just, you know, Dobbs has had a lot more time. He's mm -hmm. played in a lot more. Six years uh, in the league. That's, that's yeah. five more times the experience Malik has. And, yes, you know, that's, that's six more uh, goes to six show. More training camps, six more preseasons, mm -hmm. six more years of, of practice and being yep. like in – an NFL speed type of, uh, you know, game. So, uh, so yeah, the, the, you can pick out some things, you know, we're, we're pick, nitpicking here about positives and hope that we're, we're getting, I mean, what else can we do, Jake? We're not, I, we are not going to sit on here and root for like a loss yeah. to get a better draft pick because we don't want to get blown out in the first round. Like, no, we are here to win, win this division again and get into the playoffs. That's what it's all about. Yeah, yep. The great Herm Edwards, the coach of the New York Jets so many years ago, saying, you play to win the game. Hello. <laughs> well, we're never going to root for a high draft pick. That stuff is, is just overrated. Nothing is guaranteed in the league. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen that. Your you're, you're Isaiah Wilsons and Kevin Dodds and, uh, yep. yeah, you know, there's, yeah, the players don't work out um, all the time in the league. So, so we, we have hope. We, we are, I am rooting for this team hard on Saturday night to get a win and get into the playoffs, hosting a game. And, you know, we'll see what, what happens from there. I mean, this defense, when healthier and having the right uh, personnel on the field, particularly Simmons and those guys on the defensive line, uh, the, uh, good enough defense will give you a chance at the end of the game. Look at earlier this season. We really should have knocked off the Chiefs. I can't believe we let that game slip away at the end. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's because of having a great defense. Uh, so we'll see. Let's, let's host, uh, I don't know, the Ravens without Lamar Jackson, whoever the top wild card team is. That that mm -hmm. would be a winnable game. I mean, I'm, in, I'm just rambling here. But I'm my hope, you've helped instill hope in me, Jake. Now I'm excited. I'm glad to, to hear it. Team. I'm glad to hear <laughs> it, Saturday Justin. Night, yeah. We've been talking about a lot of good things. I just had two more notes on the Dallas game that were negative. And so we okay. have to bring a little negativity God, in this. You're going to deflate me after all that. That's fine. Uh, That's fine. Uh, this is one just a little funny anecdote. But, you know, you know, old habits die hard. I wanted to give a quick tip of the cap to T.Y. Hilton, an old friend oh. of ours, old nemesis, you should oh, say, God. of yes. the program, came back from the dead. I, I haven't seen T.Y. Hilton on a football field in seemingly a couple of years, but he Same. was killing the Titans defense on third down, and I just couldn't help but chuckle to see, you know, our old nemesis, T.Y. Hilton, doing that to us. So good for him in his uh, the twilight of his career. <laughs> I, I know it's against the Titans and, you know, uh, he's I'm no longer to be against that, but but tip of the hat, you know. He doesn't wear the Colts uniform anymore, correct, so I'm correct. I'm okay with uh, you know giving some praise for for just one of the great receivers that that played in the 2010s and God, mm -hmm. the Andrew Luck to Ty Hilton connections. I'm I'm so glad that's almost it's all. It's over. It can't hurt us anymore. Other than yeah. you know, Ty Hilton picked up a couple third downs on us. That was <laughs> yeah. that was I couldn't help but chuckle and, and and write that down as a little note. And, you know, I am not I am not an inconsistent – I'm not a guy complaining about referees in a football mm. game, but there were yeah. some inconsistent bad calls by the referees that just happened to go towards America's team, Justin, mm. on last Thursday night. Again, the Titans lost by 14 points. They had Josh Dobbs. They were playing a practice squad USFL roster on the field. Uh, so I'm not saying the referees caused the Titans the game, but there was a roughing the passer on Josh Dobbs that should have been called. The yeah. pass interference on McCreary on a clearly uncatchable ball Dak was throwing out of bounds was ludicrous. Um, 
anyways, I just wanted to to shout that out. Like, no, we could wrap up that Dallas game and and get it away. You're no, you're you're perfectly uh, uh, on point about that. Due to work reasons, I was forced to listen to the game on the radio uh, most of the time. And man, I I was definitely catching those bad calls via Dave McGinnis, the color commentator for Titans Radio. Dude, he was he was going nuts. He, I mean. Uh, I think it was uh, Sean Hockley's son. I forget what his Ed. No, Ed, no, that is, Ed is the yes. Okay, Ed Hockley was was the dad. Yeah, Sean Hockley, man, he was just roasting him, saying this is this this is one of the worst refing performances I've seen. Sean Hockley, you know, needs to uh, go back through tr- ref school or whatever. And um, dude, he was he was dogging him. He was he was like, I I can't say any more about what I'm seeing from the refs tonight, or I, oh, so I might lose my job. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was just going <laughs> off. So I was like, man, it must be really bad. Like, yeah, he is biased. He's, he does yes. root for the Titans to win, obviously. But, man, he was he was losing his mind in more uncharacteristic uh, ways than, you know, we're used to Dave McGinnis. So, yes, I was picking up on those vibes. But what do you expect? You said it. America's team on national TV against one of the smallest market teams in the NFL. Yeah, they're going to get the calls. That's just mm-hmm. some BS that. That that happens, and I don't know. Yeah, I guess now I'm feeling a little, you, you know, making excuses. But you're right. 14 points. That's you know. I wouldn't have won the not game either the way. Game. I don't think. Yeah, I, it wouldn't have changed the result. But I just, just got to call irritating. out the league. Yeah, call out yeah. the league when it's justified. Um, but uh, Justin, my last note, I guess, transitioning into uh, your preview and. Uh, what am I looking for? Keys to the game and prediction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Tennessee Titans have secured with the loss against the Dallas Cowboys, their first losing season mm. since 2015. Okay. Remove your hats and cherish what, what once was a great run for this team. Albeit there were four, nine and sevens in there. It's a winning Get record, damn it. And we'll take <laughs> it every single time. Uh, uh. but, but that's just a that's just a bummer, and I want to call that out because it almost feels yeah. like we are seeing a new. Uh, there could be a brand new era of Titans football on the horizon. Will Ryan Tannehill be the leader of this team next year? Uh, there's going to be a lot of roster changes. You mentioned the draft pick, Justin. I don't want to go there because it's loser talk. But if the Titans do lose on Saturday night, they have a top ten draft pick. Breaking news. That's crazy uh, for yeah. a team that was once seven and three and very oh. much in the driver's seat just to rub it in a little more. Sorry. Uh, hurt, my, hurt me again. So we're going to see a, a, a brand new Titans team. Obviously this is the John Robinson Titans are over and we're going to see a, a brand new regime, brand new looking roster, uh, you know, coming with that brand new looking stadium, Justin. So there, this is, does feel like the changing of the guard. Bless you. Bless you. I'm allergic um, to, to draft talk whenever <laughs> we still have a chance to play. So I'm sorry. No, I am interested. I am interested. <laughs> no, no, no draft talk here. It's just more of a, you know, big picture thing. Uh, what are your, yeah. what's, what's, what would you like to see from the Titans moving forward? Do you have any hope for the 2023 season and what that might spell for this team? Because sure. it feels like the Jaguars are ascending and the Titans are kind of just falling off of a cliff right now. And I don't know if that's just in this season specifically, or if that's going to be, uh, you know, indicative of 2023 and beyond. Yeah, it's it's regardless of even if we win against Jacksonville, make the playoffs or lose, the Titans will still have a decent mid round. Dra- like if we are mm-hmm. the AFC South champs, what where would that put us? Still in the high tens or, or no? At least teams? twenty, I think, because oh, because we make the no. There's playoffs. fourteen teams so now, so a little maybe eighteen and above. Right. Uh. Yeah. I, that's decently significant. Um. Either way, it's going to be a very interesting and very busy offseason for the Titans and one to definitely uh, keep track of. Uh, first of all, what are you going to do at the quarterback position? If we do have a top 10 pick, I mean, how much do you value? I don't know about too many players outside of the quarterbacks. Like, um, well, there we go. I don't even know. Uh, Bryce Young out of Alabama. CJ uh, Stroud. Stroud, Ohio State. Uh, if you guys the if you think these guys are very NFL ready and ready to be day one starters, um, they may be quarterbacks that will be available at number ten or nine or wherever the Titans end up landing if they lose against Jacksonville Sunday. Uh, and how do you you know value that compared to what we know we have in Ryan Tannehill? And if we're gonna keep him for his final year of his contract or cut it, save the cap room, um, or just we still might bring in. Well, I don't know. With, 
what, would, what if we did keep Tannehill, but also drafted the quarterback of the future for some competition? Tannehill mm-hmm. may be injury prone. Can can we rely on him to stay healthy? Um, how does that affect Malik Willis's development? I mean, Mike Vrabel may be willing to just kind of part with Malik Willis anyway, because mm-hmm. uh, it looks like it is going to take some time for for Willis to develop and become something. Um, but if it is a total rebuild, then maybe you do stick with Willis. But if you're ready to for a quick turnaround and be ready to be uh, contenders again as soon as next year. Um, maybe you do look at drafting, you know, one of those top quarterbacks in the, in the top 10 um, and, and try to see what you have day one and try to run it back again and try to win the South all over again. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't know. Yeah. I mean, this team has work to do outside of the quarterback. We got to fix a the lot, O-line. A lot wrong with this roster, Justin. And it's more receivers. It's, it's yeah. crazy. We're, you know, uh, we're already talking about life after Tannehill and, and we haven't even mentioned in, in video form that, you know, he went down for that secret co-op mission of a surgery to give him at <laughs> yeah. least a chance to play week 18. Definitely. And obviously they shut him down, put Ryan Tannehill on IR. His season is over, even if this team makes the playoffs. And Mike Vrabel in his quote said, you know, he talked to Ryan about it, blah, 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 coach speak. But it was, he mentioned, it was all about the big picture. What are our realistic expectations this year, even if Ryan was to come back? And that kind of was the first ever signal that Mike Vrabel outwardly doesn't think this is a Super Bowl contending team, obviously. And I don't think, you know, it doesn't take a, a rocket scientist, shout out Josh Dobbs, to see <laughs> that the Titans aren't a Super Bowl contender this year, even if they do limp into the playoffs at eight and nine. Um, so I thought that was just an interesting tidbit from Vrabel to kind of come out and say it. He's hinted at it throughout the year. But uh, it, I just thought that was interesting how that all played out. Because as soon as I saw the headline, Ryan Tannehill, long shot for week 18, I was like, why did why you even publish this article? Because you're just making me think that there's a chance he could play. And yeah. obviously, uh, you know, it was a long shot to begin with. And I... It gave me that sprinkle of hope that he might be back, and I, I was just that more disappointed to hear he was shut down. But it was an interesting, interesting piece from Rabel there. I thought. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. So, what, what do you think we we see? You know, after, you know, it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens with Dobbs too after this season if he comes That's in. True. And- and really plays well in this offense. And why would you not want to bring him back at least to compete or be mm-hmm. the backup? Uh, it yes. surprised me that he wasn't even a backup on an NFL roster. It seems like he is at worst a legit number two quarterback in, in, yeah. in the league. Uh, so we, we could draft a high quarterback uh, or a quarterback in a high round uh, and then bring in Dobbs and then they can compete and kind of move forward in that, in that fashion. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I keep going back to the, to the quarterbacks and, and whatever, but no, uh, but I don't know. There's, there's just, there's just so much going on with this team right now, and it's just, it's almost a headache to think about. Uh, <laughs> just, I just wanna, I just wanna beat Jacksonville on Saturday, and I, I feel like. Speaking I'll, of, I'll, do you have keys to beat Jacksonville? <clears throat> and you know, a prediction, we, perhaps? Yeah, we haven't really talked about ja- the Jags at all in terms of players and personnel and how they're playing. I mean, they just blew out the Texans, who beat the Titans at home a couple weeks mm-hmm. ago. So they're rolling. They're on fire. Um, it's it's going to be a challenge. Trevor Lawrence is playing his best football of his NFL career so far. Yeah. Um, Doug Peterson really has that team playing well together as a unit, uh, including their defense. I mean, the key for me, dude, is we have to take care of the football. That was our Achilles heel in the first matchup. Derrick Henry mm-hmm. fumbling the ball like twice. Uh, Tannehill, like, what did he do? He threw a pick probably. He, oh, strip sack. Thank you, Dennis Daly. Mm-hmm. Um, man, this O-line has got to come ready to play and give Dobbs a chance as well. Uh, but we, we cannot lose the turnover battle 4-0. to zero. That's just that's just impossible to overcome uh, for this team or in most teams out there. So if I got to give a key and from what I saw from the first game to this game uh, is, is take care of the football because I thought the offense moved well. I think Henry did. Didn't he break 100 rushing yards and had a touchdown and – Things were mm-hmm. kind of going well to start out that game. Uh, but uh, what good is it moving the football if you're just going to turn it over at the at the end of the day? Um, so I'm going to say I'm going to predict a Titans win after a six-game losing streak uh, going against a team with a four- or five-game winning streak. Uh, that seems crazy. We're, what, six-and-a-half-point underdogs? But I believe in the Dobbs, in the magic, that, that he could spark this offense and take care of the football, manage the game. 
uh, run through Henry, give him all the touches in the world. Um, so yeah, give, give me the Titans. Uh, well, we will match our season high, Jake, with 27 wow. big ones. <laughs> Henry's going to go crazy. Um, <laughs> knock on wood. I, geez, I, I'm Would just hoping, to Jake. I'm hoping. Uh, 27 to 24, the Titans will take home the AFC South for the third time. Let's see if I can break my six game losing streak because I've been predicting the Titans winning for the past six weeks. So, Jake, what do you think? What, what are your keys to, to this game? There's only one key, Justin, and you took it from me right off the bat there. If the Titans turn the ball over, uh, you know, they can, I'll, I'll give them one turnover. But if they turn the ball over twice in this game, they will lose. And if they turn it over one time or less, if they don't turn it over at all, I'm going to say the Titans are going to flat out win this game if they can have a goose egg in the turnover column. Uh, Love it. That would be amazing. But, uh, so, yeah, it, it just comes down to taking care of the ball. We saw it uh, last year, I feel like, most – this Titans team wasn't flashy. They weren't putting up points. The offense was ho-hum. And it was in games that they turned the ball over, they lost. And if they didn't turn the ball over, they won because it's Derrick Henry, ball control, make you submit kind of football. And will we see that on Saturday? Who knows, Justin? This Jaguars team, you said it. They are rolling. All the kudos to the Jacksonville Jaguars of the world. Uh, just <laughs> having to say that. But but talk about tipping the cap to our rivals this episode. The Jags are rolling right now. And, you know, we talked about uh, last season, Urban Meyer. What a great storyline. What a fun thing to have your rival in the division go through. What a train wreck that was. But the Urban Meyer hire and fire gave us Doug Peterson coaching the Jaguars, which may be a curse, you know, for years to come. So, yeah, yeah, uh, it's interesting to see how this Jags team has developed and come together in this new season, especially after the, t the dumpster fire they had last year. So kudos to them for reeling off wins. Justin, if the Titans don't turn the ball over in this game, they will win it. And I don't think they're gonna because Josh Dobbs, rocket scientist, playing smart, not turning <laughs> the ball over. Give me the Tennessee Titans winning yes. this football game 24 to 20. Let's go. I, I'm, I'm genuinely excited for this game, Justin. And you talked about it. there's a lot of pride on the line, a uh, lot of just overall hope. And, and how is this team kind of going to respond to a six game skid first losing season since 2015, but you still have a shot week 18 to get in. So that's, that's kind of all you can ask for as a Titans fan at this point, yeah. watching this complete collapse happen. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're not in a great place when after a 14 point loss at home on national stage, we're talking about how that gives us hope to win the last <laughs> game. <laughs> of the, just of, of how we looked and how the game played out. You know, that first half was something interesting to, to see it was you know, play out. So, um, yeah, yeah, we're going to see a motivated Titans team. We're going to see them lay it all out on the line. Todd Downing is probably going to pull out some crazy stops, some ridiculous, not necessary plays, but we just got to cross our fingers. That Please, God. It no. works out. Don't it do it, Todd. It's a turnover for the worse. Yeah, Give so, the ball to Derrick Henry. Yeah, we might see a um, flea flicker first play of the game, you know, attempt down to Nick Westbrook Aquina. So, <laughs> um, one on one. So, yeah, specialist. I guess. Yeah, right. Uh, I guess that can that can wrap it up for us. We're kind of all over the place talking about the Dallas loss and the Jags game coming up, everything on the line, and then also bigger picture moving forward. Uh, just so so many storylines and things surrounding this team, just of a debacle of a season that this is turning out to be. But they can still save it, you know, last game of the season and give the Titans something to feel good about, you know, uh, to start off this 2023 calendar year. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. So, yeah. That'll take us to the barn, Justin. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Thank you all for watching. I know we've been hit and miss with these videos, but who can you blame us? The motivation to talk about this team has got to be at an all-time low. I mean, yeah, talk yeah. about your first losing season in five, six years, seven years. Uh, you know, six-game losing skid for the first time since the uh, Ken Wisenhunt Titans. Gross. Oh, uh, no, so... Man. So yeah, who can blame us? Anyways, appreciate y'all <laughs> tuning in. Let's go to Jacksonville. Get that win on their home turf uh, under the lights in Duval. Can't wait. It's going to make it even that much sweeter. Tighten up. Let's go get this division. Uh, and, and that'll do it. Peace out. Mm -hmm.